Hello everyone, welcome to IBM SPSS Modeler webinar. My name is Arjan Kaynakcha and I work at Analysis Express as a data analyst. Also, I go to University of Cincinnati for my master's in information systems and I concentrate on my studies on uh, data analytics. Uh, before I do the demonstration on IBM SPSS Modeler, uh, I want to talk about the knowledge discovery. So. Before uh, understand, you know how the software works. We need to understand how we analyze the data, how the knowledge discovery process works. First, we have to know the uh, we have to have the do domain knowledge. So, when we have the domain knowledge, then we get the data, and then we start the da data cleansing process. You know, basically we prepare the data, and then. We do the data transformation, and then we do our data mining right here. And also, after that, actually, uh, we can see the patterns in the data, and then interpret that and evaluate the result, and then we can have our knowledge. So basically, we have first the data, the raw data, and then we turn it to information and knowledge. OK. So why data mining the goal is that to extract knowledge from a data set in a human understandable structure the first objective is to explain some uh, observed event or condition the second objective is to confirm a hypothesis and third and the final objective of data mining is exploratory in nature in other words analyzing data for new and unexpected relationships Okay, where data mining can be used? Customer Relationship Management, CRM. I'm sure a lot of you have heard about this. So you can attract new clients or retain current clients, bring back former clients or reduce marketing costs. Basically, um, if we're sending out like mails or something like that to prospective customers about uh, the offer you have, you can analyze the people you're sending to and kind of like find out what are the people that most likely uh, are gonna accept your offer. That way you filter out the people that who is not gonna respond, that mostly not, not uh, gonna respond, and that way you cut, cut your cost tremendously. And also you can do market basket analysis. You can um, identify purchasing, purchasing habits. Let's say that you're on Amazon, you know, you buy something and they kind of like tell you what you might buy next. So they kind of offer you at that time, that way they increase the sale value, sales value. You can do fraud detection. A lot of credit, comp credit card companies uses that to find out uh, what is a fraud uh, purchase and which one is not. And also you can use, uh, you can do forecasting. You can use historical data to predict future trends. Also, uh, you can do text mining, which is sentimental analysis. Um, Amazon, Twitter, and Facebook uses that a lot. Okay. Uh, the technique chosen for each specific task depends on factors such as the nature of the data and the size of the data set. So, um, you can use regression to test or discover relationships from historical data. You can use decision tree inductions to test or discover if then rules for decision uh, propensity. You can cluster uh, and you can do affinity or sequence as uh, association and other techniques. It depends on your needs. Um, according to 2009 Rexler Analytics Survey, IBM SPSS Modeler uh, is the primary software package used by more data miners than any other software package. And, and also it's in the industry, it's very huge in the industry and also in the academia. And also here we can see the satisfaction for the SPSS um, is very, very high. Um, SPSS Element Team actually, that's what it used to be called in 2009. And then IBM bought it. Now it's called IBM SPSS Modeler. Okay. Um, 
Now let's uh, look at our data. Uh, basically, what we're gonna be doing is that uh, we're gonna analyze the data for own banking data. Okay, let's open our SPSS modeler. Okay, so before we look at the data, let's uh, talk about what a model is. So a model is a set of rules, formulas, or equations that can be used to predict an outcome based on a set of input fields or variables. So for um, a financial institution might use a model to predict whether loan applicants are likely to be good or bad risks based on information that is already known about the past applicants. So in that data set, that's what we're going to be using. Uh, we're going to use a decision tree model and we're going to have a historical data uh, on a bank and uh, on for customers and we're going to build a, a model, um, shape model actually, um, to kind of forecast what kind of customers are likely to pay their loans and what are the other ones that who don't. Okay, so to understand any model, you first need to understand the data that go into it. The data in this example contain information about the customer of a bank, as I mentioned, and now let's look at the data types and the fields. So here we have the credit rating, and so basically credit rating is our target. So we have the age and income level and number of credit cards, education, and car loans. Okay, so those are our fields and we have our measurement levels and this is actually, I just used the SPSS modeler um, to read the data and it determines uh, according to the records what, what is the measurement uh, level. Most of the time it's very accurate and you know if you need to you can do some um, adjustments but for now it looks okay. Okay, um, since we put our target for credit rating here, we can see in our model um, the credit rating is the target field. Okay, um, so let's browse our model a little bit. So, okay, here you can see the target is the credit rating, and the others are the predictors. And here we can see that um, we're cr uh, creating a single tree model and it's a basic chain model. For the stopping rules, uh, since you know we want to have a general idea about like what customers um, are good and bad, so we want to limit our results. Uh, we don't want to uh, expand the uh, branch in the decision tree model so much. Uh, in order to simplify it, basically we set the minimum records in the parent branch to 400 and in the child branch to 200. And let's run our model. And it's going to create the model nugget. So let's browse it. Okay. Here we see that the income level is 78% important. And the second is the number of credit cards and it's 20% and the age is only 2% important. So this kind of like tells you uh, what you need to focus on most when you're determining if the customer is good uh, or bad on the information that you have. And also on the left we have the form view and that gives you a good summary about uh, who's a good customer or not. So we can see that if the income level is high basically most of the customers uh, they are good no matter you know if they have less than five or more than five credit cards or if their um, income level is low um, the other field the other fields are not that important and we can see that you know they are most likely a bad customer but for the income level uh, in medium we can see that if they have less than five credit cards, it's good, and more than five credit cards, it's not really good. So in order to see in depth, um, we can see the tree view here, 
So the query rating we have um, 2,500 records almost, and 58% is good, and only 40% um, is bad. But in order to see, um, you know, kind of like focus on the ones that um, who would pay their loans back, we can say that hey, I just want to have only the high income people, and then you will have 88. 80 88% of the people who would pay their loans and only 11% wouldn't pay their loans. So this is very high probability. And for the medium one, 58 might be low, um, but when you look at the number of credit cards, you can see that when they have less than five credit cards, basically 86% um, of the people who would pay their loans and you would gain another like 336 people you know on top of it and if you say uh, hey you know even though like they might have like five or more credit cards and if they are older than 28 you might say they are good also and you can see that 56 percent of the people they're good okay so let's connect the table to the model and see the individual records to kind of like see what kind of customers you know they are predicted you know good or bad um, and what is the confidence level so here for the first one we can see that um, this person actually uh, 36 years old and income level is medium and that per also he or she has more than five credit cards with the college degree um, didn't pay his or her loan and it predicts that only 56% confidence um, that person is going to be a good I mean in good credit rating but the second one uh, it is confident that 80% that person is bad I mean it predicts it right so uh, most of them uh, you can see that it's kind of like the same and some of them um, it doesn't predict right uh, in order to see how many it predicts right and wrong, um, you can um, click on the analysis, connect the analysis node, and run it. And you can see that almost 80% of uh, the software, the analysis node predicts uh, right, and 20% is wrong. Um, the, as expected, the predicted value matches the actual responses a four million of records but not all the reason for this is to is that each chain terminal node has a mix of responses the prediction matches the most common one but will be wrong for the others in that node and you can see that 16 uh, 16 percent of the minority of low income customers who did not default okay So that's it for today. Um, if you have any questions, please um, email me. And thank you for watching my video. Thank you.